Good morning, everyone. So today I'm going to discussing the cost of synergy. So we just, I just created this term on the way to, to this events. Why cost of synergy? So probably as Thomas has mentioned, we are seeing the cost of energy is dropping dramatically for renewables. So in the future, we're probably going to have one cent per kilo hour renewable energy. Actually, I'm strongly believing that. So we consider this war has been solved. But so it's time for us to think about the cost of synergy, the flexibility, this mismatch between supply and demand. But before I come into the cost of synergy, still I was asked to introduce some renewable technology which give us the confidence why we are so confident for the cost of energy is going to be so cheap, why it's going to be one US cent per kilo hour. So I put an example, I always said, renewable energy is not about energy, it's about technology. You know, what is energy? Energy is commodity, like oil, like fossil oil, is driven by supply demand. So then you can see oil price is 30 US dollar per, per barrel now, it's coming up again to 70 or even 80. Last week, I'm in a conference with the CEO of an oil major. He told me oil oh, probably going end of the year will be above 100 euro, uh, 100 US dollar again. No, we used to think, okay, now with renewable energy coming, oil is not going to move up again. You see the fluctuation by supply and demand. So never give any expectation on the fossil fuel can save us. Yeah. So, that's why renewable energy is technology. It follows Moore's law. It's driven by technology. Once you are able to reach three cents per kilo hour for solar on the same condition, next year, I'm sure the cost will be even lower. The efficiency is continuing improving. It will never come back again. So that's amazing things we say is Moore's law. It's continuous dropping. So for instance, so I have an example. For Envision, we originally come from the wind OEM side. So this year alone, we set up a target for the next 12 months, we want to cut in the wind turbine system cost for another 20%. I'm sure we are going to achieve that. The reason why I'm doing that, because before that, I was in a meeting with the largest solar silicon company in the world, of course, based in China. The CEO told me, next year, they are going to cut the silicon cost about 50%. It's quite challenging. So we have to come up with 20% target. So this continuous war, this kind of technology competition, is driving the cost of energy restlessly. And of course, though, Envision, we also is following up with this upstream battery business. We know the cost of battery is also have a 20% kind of learning curve every year. So in the future, one cent per kilo hour definitely is happening, I think, within 10 years. So once renewable energy is so cheap, so we come at next level question. So we see this come intermittency. So it gives us a possibility to use 100% renewable energy, but the, the intermittency coming. So when sun is not shining, wind is not blowing, how are we going to address it? this demand issue. So we have to create a demand-oriented energy system. Or, uh, sorry, it's a supply-oriented system. So that's what we think about. The cost of a synergy is most critical. And for example, we also seeing another kind of disrupting force, not only on the supply side, it's electro, electrical mobility on demand side. So we have some calculation. If 10% of, of EV of cars in Shanghai have been converted to the EV, so if they are charging same, fast charging same time, the Shanghai grid have to be doubled and generation have to be doubled. So how can we you know, collaborate with this? So it is great challenge on the demand side. This demand side disruption and the supply disruption from renewables is really breaking into such a mainframe energy system. So in the future, energy system is not going to be a mainframe world. It's like a very linear from big coal-fired plant to, to distribution and you know, transmission distribution. It's not like that. It's going to network 
comes, is very fragmented by millions, millions or billions pieces of solar panel, wind turbines, storage, EV, or smart energy devices around the world. That's the future energy system look like. So what we need is operating system or a platform, a platform which is being able to connect all these devices and orchestrate like a super brain to help achieve the local or global kind of balancing, optimize on a country level or community level, even on household level. So that's why in vision, so five years ago, we have this idea. But it's, you know, it's quite an advanced idea. So we built this NOAs, this IoT platform for energy. It has been already been the largest IoT platform for energy business. It's connecting 100 gigawatt energy devices. So which means around, we calculate around 50 million devices, including thermostat, in terms of transformer, in terms of HVAC, and uh, lift, and also buildings, and uh, solar PV, converter, wind turbine, storage, and EV. So that's, we are doing that. So we are, our customer is also ranging from the, the big, you know, US utility company like Duke Energy, uh, like uh, Share New Energy, so like, uh, so EDP or around the world, and also CLP in Hong Kong, so also some, some European customers as well. So what are we doing? So I'll give you some example. How do we achieve synergy? For example, so I'm also the chairman of a Zonen Battery, which is a German uh, energy storage company. So they claim they have been so far the leading one. They have been connecting 30,000 home storage. So originally, so they are a very boring hardware company. So, OK, I see. Once we invest, okay, no, no more doing the business. You cannot compete with other Korean or Chinese company on this battery making. So what you can do is we have NOAs. These NOAs have been connecting so much devices and with the temperature, with the weather, with grid, with, with, with your local community. We can help you define a software or a network defined storage. That's actually the difference between the Nokia phone and the smartphone. So in the past, you're knocking phone. So we become a smart storage. Then your storage is able to manage all your home energy balancing between solar panel and the charging point, and also the also kind of heating system become the brain of the home. And more than that, so we have to move to the next step. So they can start to sharing energy among neighborhood. So because of German regulation change, so you only pay a little bit, okay, distribution fee. You, are able to share energy with your neighborhood once you have surplus energy. And furthermore, with this energy operating system, they are being connected to this grid. I think they are working with a grid company called 50 Hertz. I'm not sure which grid company in the Bavaria area. So they are able to provide this kind of grid ancestral service, providing frequency and voltage regulation using the battery. So you know, they, they are totally they change the business model from a hardware company to a software defined company to eventually a service company. And uh, they are already to actually to selling the energy. So it's not hardware company. So they, now their biggest competitor is a company like Eon, RWE. They offer much lower price because they get another, a few different revenue stream from the grid service from the cost of synergy balancing, all kinds of things. Yeah, so next step, I say, okay, you are going to become a home AI company because you have so much data, all the end devices. How can you, you know, to make the society, community, and the home much smarter? So that's one, ca one case. Another case is we are working with CLP. You know, as I mentioned, this, CLP, they are in Hong Kong, it's Ireland. There are so many Tesla cars coming. They estimate if, if this trend is going up, they have to invest tremendous things on the transformer, also on the distribution line. So how can we use actually the NOA system, which is orchestrated between the car charging and also the, the local community substation voltage, also the building energy efficiency. So that really works. It's going to delay their investment on overall capex. It works a lot. And what I'm thinking is, so when later on we, one minute here. Yeah. 
Okay, so the so last case is, no, we're also working with Singapore. We are enabling Singapore Smart City program to help the company like Zonum, uh, the company like Capel, Ascendis, all the smart city operators to really become, to have a platform on the knees to like seamlessly orchestrating all the energy devices. So that's what I think is, in the future, once this, the, this kind of orchestration from IoT platform, the, especially when so much you know, digital and physical storage come to line, the cost of synergy also will be minimal as well. So that's my, so then the utility company will have to think about what's the future of utility. I'm going to answer in the panel discussion. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.